Hey guys, it's David, still here at the uh, K-Bar booth, and who did I find but Mr. Ethan Becker, and he's been so kind to spend like four hours with me and tell me everything about knives and steel and everything. Not really, but we've, we've been here like, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minutes. Anyway, I appreciate his graciousness and time to kind of educate us on some things about knives, and, and I really, 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 really wanted to get to this one because it looks cool and it's it's... It looks tough. It's the BK3, and we're going to try and nail this in like four minutes. You think we can do right, it? Yeah. Okay, let's go. First of all, I want to say thank you for listening to me. <laughs> I have trouble finding people who do that, so <laughs> you're not, thankful, I'm thankful it'll work. Bro, it's not. All right. All right. This knife is a kind of a collaboration. Um, I had a friend of mine, uh, John Benner, who is the guy who started Tactical Defense Institute, and he and I were partners back when it was a tactical training center. There was, there was me and 22 policemen, and a judge. Uh, so, and he was the field commander of the Hamilton County SWAT team, and he was there for about 20 years. And he came to me and he said he wanted a pry bar with a sharp edge that he could beat on things with. So this is, was originally designed as a tool. When you drop the after you drop the ram at the front door, it would take care of any interior problem problems prying open doors uh, going through drywall etc 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 it's a it's a single uh, single grind uh, this part right here um, I call a sharp hammer and it will take care of uh, reinforced glass and it will break uh, break uh, safety glass as well and it's got a, a, a prying edge in the front and um, this transitions to the hammer, and I'm not exactly sure why I did that. We were talking earlier about aesthetics, oh, aesthetics, and how it looks. And I, it was just too crude looking straight there. And uh, this was designed to cut 550 cord uh, because it used to be that they would tie off at the, they cleared an area and they came back out, and the door went into the cleared area. They'd take 550 cord and then tie it onto something. And if somebody tried to come out, they, they could hear a jiggle. And this was designed to do the 550 cord uh, in a hurry when they John Wayne back into the area. So uh, again, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a. Looks like the handle is very similar to the BK2. Yeah, same handle, okay. same handle. I don't design very many handles. I spend a lot of time on it when I do it. So, so you get it right and you just reuse them. Yeah. So why why change? Why you know why make 43 handles for 43 knives when 90% of them are exactly doing exactly the same thing, yeah. you know? And a human hand is a human hand, and it only feels comfy in certain ways. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's um, I, I told you earlier there have been two of them broken, one by a volunteer fire department, and a controlled environment where we took apart a Dodge Omni and it took um, it took two and a half firemen um, leaning on it trying to pull a nader pin out to break it and the other time was uh, during Katrina there were two policemen in South Louisiana who were try trying to pry open a jail door which they did not have a key for as the waters were rising to get somebody out and he said the door and the knife broke about the same time. And he didn't want a replacement. He just wanted to tell me the story. And I said, no. It's, it served its, its duty. He it's, was it's, okay with that, yeah. The warranty's good on this one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. So. Tell us more about the function feature. Did we cover pretty much everything? Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically a pry bar with a sharp edge you can okay. beat on stuff with. I mean, this, would this, it function this, as a survival tool or anything, too? Yeah, actually, Ron Hood liked it a lot. Okay. And um, uh, uh, a lot of the guys like Joe Flowers, yeah. you know Joe, Joe. Yeah. and he loves it for grub hunting and, you know, he's, you know, he's always prying into, into, into yeah. things, trying to find something poisonous that's going to hurt yeah. him really bad. And he's in the snakes. He's in the I know, yeah. I know. I don't understand this. Yeah. Um, but it's a multi-purpose tool. So, it is um, not the world's best field craft tool. Okay. But... If you have one of these to go with it, you got most of your bases covered. That's awesome. That's awesome. So 
this is what is this one called? This is the BK. This is a BK3 Tac Tool. Okay, awesome. Well, I want to thank Ethan for spending the time with us today, and we've done like three or four or five videos, depending on how I cut them up at the end. So look for other videos and look for links to the knives and gear that we've talked about in the video description on YouTube, which will be below. Click the Show More tab. For your convenience, I've included links to all the gear that we've talked about and parts one and two of my interview with the great Ethan Becker in the video description on YouTube. Just click the Show More tab under this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. While you're there, grab our monthly survival e-mag, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contests we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side, and remember, be prepared, because you never know.